Welcome to Dire Headlines, I'm Wendy Chen, thank you for joining us. Coming up in today's show, a month after Indonesia's flooding, Jakarta City volunteers are carrying out another aid distribution to help flood victims. In our feature report on historical sites around Taiwan, we learn the history behind the Sugar Industry Cultural Park in Taipei's Wanhua. And a group of Tzu Sao's are coming together to put on a drumming performance at Malaysia's Sign Language Musical. In Indonesia's Jakarta, the monsoon rains in mid-January left areas of the city underwater for nearly a month, as the flood waters have yet to subside in some areas. The city Indonesia chapter is again carrying out aid distributions to help disaster victims. Asbidara Sina village in East Jakarta is situated close to a riverbank. The flood waters from January's rain have yet to recede. Residents thus have no choice but to seek temporary shelter elsewhere. When the flooding occurred, some stayed on their second floor, while other families had to evacuate separately. The flood waters reached two and a half meters, so I had to stay upstairs. We have a two-story house, but there is only one room on the second floor, so my sister and I stayed there. The kids had to seek shelter elsewhere. I only evacuated on the fourth day. As there was no electricity or stove to cook on, there's nothing we could do. No one had come to help us. Knowing the difficulties being faced by the disaster victims, city volunteers visited each family door to door to hand out distribution coupons. We visited the disaster victims door to door according to a name list provided to us by the borough head in each community. After registering the affected households, we made sure they got the relief items on the same day. Apart from handing out a 5-kilo bag of rice and 20 packs of instant noodles, the emotional support brought by CG volunteers gave residents the strength to go on. I'm very grateful to receive these aid supplies. The residents all felt that the Indonesia city volunteers all gave the disaster victims the best assistance possible. Local residents lending a helping hand at the event helped speed up the distribution process. With relief items now in hand, disaster victims are given a dose of courage and hope for the days ahead. In Taiwan, different groups within Tsiji, including young volunteers from Jingsu Books and Cafe and doctors from the Taipei Tsiji Hospital, sent their New Year's greetings to Master Zin Yen through video conference. Whether young or old, or gathered to make a vow to continue walk the Tsiji path for as long as they can. Here in Taiwan, four days into the Lunar New Year, young volunteers from Jingsu Books and Cafe and over 200 other volunteers gathered at the Tsiji Grand Duke grounds to wish Master Zhen Yan a Happy New Year via webcam. <laughs> At the event, 12 policemen, besides putting on a strong performance of vow in action, also make a promise. In the past 10 years, Jingsu Humanities continue to spread the Dharma to people's hearts, with many of society's leaders coming to understood the power of these lessons. For the new year, we need to learn more about doing city and how to be a good city person, to be determined in our mind and to strive for progress. We hope that in the year ahead, Master Zheng Yan and city spirit continues to shine on this earth. At the day's event, Tsuji Global Volunteer Coordinator Huang Sixian also conducted the first spiritual seminar of the year. He shares with everyone how each country's volunteers are doing their part in getting closer to the Buddha's heart. Also gathered together are the staff from Taipei Tsuji Hospital, Tsuji volunteers and TIMA members. In the days ahead, we hope to join TIMA with their reputation of doing good deeds. We hope to be a support system for them and enter the community where we are needed most.
Taipei City Hospital and Tima have long worked together to hold free clinics to help out residents in remote areas while learning from each other in the process. With regard to patient care workflow, we can see the professionalism of Taipei City Hospital. We can see how complete their medical care is, and with the hospital's guidance, we hope to improve our own patient care. No matter if it is volunteers of the Jingsi Books and Cafe or those who work to safeguard our health, everyone is unified in hoping to start out this new year on the right foot. Also making good use of technology are the volunteers at the Tsiji Keda chapter in Malaysia who joined their counterparts at the Jingse Road in Taiwan's Hualien through video conference calls to chant sutras together in praying for a peaceful year ahead. At 10 past 4 in the morning, the volunteers have gathered at the Tsiji Keda chapter. We are Master Jingyin's disciples. Chanting the Sutra is good for us. Learning the Dharma helps change our habits for the better. In the New Year holidays from the past three years, Tsuji volunteers in the Kada chapter have joined their fellow volunteers in prayer of the Jing's abode in Hualien through video conference. We hope that this activity can help us improve with our fellow volunteers. Meanwhile, in a remote town near Kada, Tsuji volunteers held a year and blessing ceremony, which saw many participants come forth. Through this year and blessing ceremony, we want to bring Master Zheng Yan's blessings to Pokosena and bring out more bodhisattvas to cultivate a field of blessings. Chou Zhicheng, who is a dialysis patient, told the participants how he faces his illness. Don't give up. Don't be frustrated. Healthy people like you can give more love and care to your families. Within one month's time, Tsuji volunteers in Malaysia held 25 year end blessing ceremonies in different places, where they not only deliver blessings but also receive the residents' charitable love. For many Chinese communities, the Lunar New Year is considered to be the biggest holiday of the year. However, for those living overseas, the festive atmosphere here is sometimes absent. To help students get a better understanding of the meaning of the Lunar New Year, city academies across the United States all hosted events to celebrate the holiday. Beating the gong and other traditional Chinese instruments, students at the Las Vegas Tsuji Academy are celebrating the Lunar New Year. Many students also seize the opportunity to donate money from their bamboo coin banks. We also appreciate the, the Buddhist values of uh, caring for one another, compassion, uh, wisdom, patience. Uh, so we're very happy and, and we very, feel very fortunate that this is such an organization here in Las Vegas. <laughs> It was like you never thought that in Sin City there would be this, this wonderful organization. So uh, thank you. We're so happy to, to be part of it. Yeah. At the Cupertino City Academy, teachers explain to students what each food symbolizes. Many families might not have the time to prepare for the Chinese New Year, so we want to give our students the chance to experience the holiday. We hope they can gain a better understanding of Chinese culture that way. Other than learning about the Lunar New Year holidays, students also get some hands-on experience on writing Chinese calligraphy. Meanwhile, in California, students from the San Dimas City Academy are donating money from their bamboo coin banks to help those in greater need. <laughs> and at the Houston City Academy, senior students put on a line dance performance to celebrate the Chinese New Year. Receiving red envelopes of blessings and wisdom from their teachers, for these students, this new year will be one full of happiness and blessings.
Today in our continuing series on Taiwan's historical sites, we take you to the Shooter Ingus Industry Cultural Park in Taipei's Wanghua District. Following the fall of the sugar industry, the Sugar Corporation eventually sold the land and what remained of Taiwan's sugar trade heritage were three warehouses. And in 2003, the three historic warehouses were declared Taipei's 106 historical sites. In addition, the Minghua Yuan Arts and Cultural Group was invited by the Department of Cultural Affairs to move into the park, thus injecting a further artistic flair into the location. Do not underestimate the red bricks and archway behind me, as they are over a hundred years old. This sugar refinery, which occupies 10 hectares of land, is the only facility of its kind in Taipei. When the refinery ceased its operations, this land was sold to the city for public housing and later became the offices of a local newspaper. What remains as witness to the era of the sugar industry in Taiwan are only these three warehouses. We set up a sugar refinery in Taipei as no such facility existed at the time to accommodate the high demand here in Taipei. The Japanese felt that setting up a manufacturing plant here would reduce the transportation costs. Most of the sugar cane came from a 300 or 400 hectare farm in Linko and the sugar cans were pushed all the way here by cart. During the colonial period, under the policy of industrial Japan and agricultural Taiwan, implemented by the Japanese government, Taiwan's sugar industry flourished. There are two oxen here, and the sugar cane farmer would place the sugar cane in the middle of the stone mill and grind it until the sugar cane juice flowed into the bucket next to it. Then it was taken to the refinery to be processed. Once a thriving trade, Taiwan's sugar industry brought in large amounts of income for the island. Formerly run as a Japanese enterprise, the Taipei Sugar Refinery, using advanced production technology, established the largest refinery in northern Taiwan. After 34 years of production, the refinery ceased its operations, leaving behind its former fame and glory. It was only when some children stumbled upon these bricks and wondered about the latest TR engraved on them did we discover that it's due for the Taiwan Rain Gang Company. After a series of inspections, it was classified as the city's 106th historical site. This is the railway platform on which the trains that transported the sugarcane used to run on. This park used to be in a state of disrepair, but with some maintenance, it seems better now. Both the municipal government and Taiwan Sugar Corporation jointly own the land and they have invited an arts and cultural group to be stationed here to preserve and incorporate Taiwanese heritage and tradition. This is a spacious venue that offers elevated space as well, so we made a recommendation to the Department of Cultural Affairs to utilize this space for performances or exhibitions. This space can accommodate up to 200 seats. We can squeeze in about 300 and most 350. To perform in a venue that has been declared a historical site, both organizers and visitors all need to adhere to certain restrictions, such as not using fire or nails. Before the start of every performance, we will introduce the site to the audience because we have the chance to utilize the space. It is our duty to protect it as well. Everyone cooperates actually. They will even take their litter home with them at the end of each performance. With luck, one even might catch a glimpse of the hard work that goes on behind the stage. This location, once tucked away in the alleys of Wanghua District, has been given a new life with cultural significance. And with the inclusion of the main Huayuan Arts and Cultural Group, the park has been further infused with an artistic flair. Back to Malaysia, a group of children from the Penang City Kindergarten visited an organic clothing store where they had a chance to play with natural dyes. In the process, the children not only learned about cherishing resources, but also went home with their handmade handkerchief. Let's take a look. Closing their eyes, these children from Penang's dyed City Kindergarten are using their fingers to feel the texture of the organic cotton. 
makes the children get a chance to play with natural dyes. We wanted the children to know that there are many natural resources out there. We wanted to give them an opportunity to know how to care for these plants and to give thanks for these plants. As plants and flowers have a short life, the children should know how to assist in extending their lives. Organic dyeing is using natural plant dyes to color fabric. Although there are many steps, it's not too difficult for the children to grasp. First, the children fold the handkerchief into a shape they like. Next, they submerge the fabric in the dye. Then they wait until it's dry. And after rinsing out the excess dye, the handkerchief is complete. We have to give thanks to the plants because they gave us color to dye fabrics. This can be promoted as an educational program. Others can come and learn how to use natural dyes for fabric and feel how good organic cotton is. I think that would be wonderful. In giving thanks to Mother Nature, these little ones are learning how to protect the environment at a young age. Upcoming musical rendition of Purity, Great Love, and Innumerable Meanings, which will be performed this weekend in Malaysia's Penang. Apart from the usual sign language performance, a drumming performance will also be shown. The members of the drum team are at Sisaos between the ages of 13 and 19 and are all playing the instrument for the first time. Despite the difficulties they have come across, the students have used every practice session in full in hopes of putting on a perfect show. After their first practice session, it was obvious much improvement was still needed. However, these students from the Penang City Academy have worked hard towards putting on a perfect performance at the upcoming musical. After we started practicing, my hand shook when I got home. And then on the second day, when I went to school, my hand was still shaking as I wrote. I only recovered a few days later. It is also the coach's first time in designing a Buddhist rhythm. I normally teach solo drumming. To teach the instrument in a Buddhist formation is quite a challenge. The solo drumming He Ming Tai is referring to is the body language and musical rhythms that Malaysians have come up with to mark the 24 solo terms. We have to personally experience the drumming. With each sound we make, we need to understand where it comes from. We can feel a sense of serenity in the drumming, and it will help calm the minds of our audience. With limited time to practice, performers seized each rehearsal session in hopes of putting on a perfect show on their big night. After Cixi volunteer Huang Mei then retired, she started visiting the Taizong Cixi chapter each day to help with kitchen work. Even during the Lunar New Year holidays, she has not missed a day and also brought her daughter along to lend a hand. Here's more. Here in Taiwan, Huang Mei Zhen volunteers as a cook in the kitchen at the Cixi Taizong chapter. Everyone is happy to be able to come back here, and after making their offerings, they can enjoy a hot meal. During the Lunar New Year, a bowl of good luck soup is something that can't be missed. In Chinese tradition, white radish represents luck, so of course we need to have a white radish soup. 
Despite the Lunar New Year's holidays, Huang Meizhen still shows up at the Taichung City chapter, where one will find her 365 days a year. Taking advantage of the holidays is her daughter, who has come to help out and share in the joy. I hope to fulfill the idea, which is get our house in order and then give where we can. She's a really good worker. She outshines us all in that department. <laughs> her ability in the kitchen is something that Huang has learned from her years of study. I will watch to see how the other sisters cook as each team cooks in a different way. Working through the Lunar New Year's holidays, Huang Meizhen is using her cooking to cultivate blessings for herself and those around her. At this New Year occasion, city volunteers in Tainan visited the inmates at the Mingde prison, where they put on a short skit expressing the importance of filial piety. Upon seeing the play, many inmates were moved to tears and repented for their past mistakes, and all vowed to fulfill their filial duties after their release. Under city volunteers' guidance, the inmates of the Mingde prison practice the sutra to cleanse their hearts, followed by a short skit which shows them the importance of filial piety. <laughs> The scenes of a mother-child reunion reminds the inmates of their past mistakes. I regret for my past behaviors before I enter the prison. One day, I called my mother asking her to hurry home. Later, she said she nearly had a car accident. It always makes me sad when I think of this. During the Lunar New Year holidays, the inmates' nostalgia for their families becomes even stronger. Despite their past mistakes, with Siji volunteers by their side, they vow to walk the Bodhisattva path and fulfill their filial duties. Staying in Taiwan, we meet two individuals, Yan Ruiqi and Chen Lusang, both of whom, after joining Ciji and seeing those less fortunate, not only learn to cherish what they have, but have also changed for the better. Here in Taiwan, 34-year-old Yan Ruiqi had an opportunity last year to join Ciji volunteers at Jordan's Winter Aid Distribution and saw firsthand how difficult life can be. It was winter when I visited, and it was snowing. I saw many children there walking barefoot in the snow. I feel really bad for them. This year, Yan returned to Taiwan for the Lunar New Year holiday and seized the opportunity to do volunteer work. Another person whose life has changed since after meeting Ciji is volunteer Chen Lusheng, a businesswoman who had learned to let go of her pride. Before, I always stared people down my nose. Now I don't. Master Den Yan says, one who constantly looks down on others reveals his lack of moral cultivation. So I feel like I needed to change my views on things. In helping out people in need, these volunteers are not wasting a minute of their Lunar New Year holiday. We stay in Taiwan at the end of our show. At the New Year gathering organized by the Dalin City Hospital, medical staff are divided into groups to help store bamboos into sections to make coin banks. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.